Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I want to talk to you about some of the horror, thriller, and creepy nonfiction I've been reading recently. I don't have a lot of preamble, so let's just get started. First, let's talk horror because let's be honest, that's what a lot of you guys are here for. And I read a horror novella called Jack and Jill by Keelan Patrick Burke. This is about a woman who as a child was sexually abused and molested by her father along with her brother also suffered the same fate. In order to get some mental escapism from their life, these two siblings would go up a hill and tumble down and just do that in order to just get their minds off of it. And so the story very much is framed around that classic nursery rhyme. The woman's name is Jill and her brother was John but went by the name Jack. However, as a child, something happened and Jack ended up getting hurt and actually killed when he went down the hill the one time. And now the story takes place primarily in the present day when Jill is an adult and she is remembering her past and she is having dreams of her brother remembering them as children rolling down this hill and she believes that her dead brother is talking to her and trying to send her messages. She is struggling in her personal life because she's going through a lot of insomnia and not sleeping well. She has a really strained marriage and is fighting with her husband and is just snapping at her children. She begins to have hallucinations and things really spiral from there. I enjoyed this one. I have read Keelan Patrick Burke several times before and I'm always just impressed by his writing. As an indie author, he is one of those people that you can point to when you want to show that an author can self-publish and still be an incredibly strong writer and he just has a lot of skill. His books just have really good characters and the plotting is excellent. And this one was definitely dark and disturbing. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of when horror stories rely on the tropes of dream sequences and hallucinations. So I didn't love those aspects, but that's more my personal taste. However, I very much liked where the story went. I thought it had a really strong ending. And yeah, it was just very twisted, disturbing, all of that. Given the setup and premise, you've gotta know that there are huge, huge content warnings for this one. The author never really gets into anything graphic regarding the molestation, but it's definitely there and it was uncomfortable enough to read about even just as a topic of discussion. So keep that in mind, it's not gonna be for everyone, but if you are okay with that kind of subject matter, it's a very well plotted novella. Next, I actually read some middle grade horror, which is not something I read a lot of. I didn't read it as a kid, I was way too much of a scaredy cat, but I've heard great things about this one, so I wanted to try it out, and that was Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. And this is a story of a young girl who is quite smart, she's good at math, and she's precocious and a big reader, and she goes on a field trip with her fellow students. However, before she leaves, she gets warned by this crazy woman that things are gonna come out at night and she needs to go and find a small space to hide in in order to survive. And the premise and setup was very intriguing and mysterious. And this whole story is set in the fall and it very much has that autumn Halloween feel to it. There are scarecrows and a corn maze, and it just had a really good sense of atmosphere. I am one of those readers that does tend to maybe dismiss middle grade a little too much that I assume that something can't be scary if it's aimed at younger kids. But while this book certainly did not scare me, I'll say that it was decently creepy, especially for the target age audience. And while it is definitely a middle grade book, I can't pretend that I felt like I was reading an adult novel. But regardless of that, I do feel like the author put in a lot of all ages appeal. I did not feel like I was being talked down to. And there was a lot of humor and entertainment moments that just worked for me. So if you want middle grade horror with some really likable characters, a lot of discussions of food, which was always delicious to read about, and some really good friendships that develop, I would definitely recommend it. After that, I went on to read the sequel, which is Dead Voices, and this one follows the same young girl and her friends that are now going off to a ski lodge and they quickly realize that there might be something more going on, possibly a haunting, 
And this one has more of a wintry atmosphere, but it wasn't as strong. I don't feel like the author did as good a job portraying the coldness in this climate. And while I enjoyed this one, I'll say it wasn't as good. I'm not sure if I'll actually continue on with the series, but I definitely enjoyed the first one. So I highly recommend Small Spaces and tentatively recommend the sequel, Dead Voices. If you're a huge fan of the series, you might wanna keep going with it. Again, I'm not sure if I'm going to though. Next, I read a thriller called No Exit by Taylor Adams, and this follows a woman who is driving through the night in order to get to see her mother who is possibly dying in a hospital, and she wants to get there before it's too late. However, it is storming outside and she ends up having to pull over at a rest stop. When she is there, there are a few other people who are also stuck out there and she meets them, they seem nice enough. However, when she goes outside to her car, she believes that she sees a small child hiding in the back seat of another vehicle and possibly is trapped inside. And so this woman believes that this girl has been kidnapped and then goes in to try to figure out who is responsible and how to get this girl out of the situation, even though they are very much trapped in this small space and don't have a lot of places to go. I have actually held off reading this one for quite a while. It came out and had a lot of buzz and then it had a lot of mixed reviews. So because I don't read tons of thrillers, I wasn't really sure if this one was gonna be worth my time but I was intrigued. I got the chance to read the audiobook through Scribd. And by the way, Scribd has been really good for getting me audiobooks that I can't get a hold of otherwise, as well as books like that Jack and Jill book that I mentioned that aren't available on Kindle Unlimited. So I do have a link down below if you want to go check it out. But back to the book, I was happy to actually get a chance to try the audiobook of No Exit. I like the narrator enough that I wanted to continue on, and it was just an easy book to fly through, so I did finish it and all of that, which is why I have a review here. And I will say that this book is very readable, very bingeable, it's fast paced, which is I think what a lot of people like about it. It's very addicting, but I don't think it's the best plotted story. I didn't love the characters. I found them to be very flat and very stereotypical. The other thing to know about this one is the fact that it's very gruesome. While I would first and foremost call it a thriller because it doesn't have any supernatural aspects to it, I've also heard people put on the label of calling this a horror thriller. And I think that's because of the fact that it's just so gruesome. There is a lot of bloody, disturbing scenes that happen. It's definitely got elements of body horror, especially towards the end, and it goes to some yeah, dark places. So if you want a thriller with a lot of action, a lot of punch, that one that you are just gonna fly through, this might be one to check out. It's probably really good for a reading slump because again, you'll just read it incredibly quickly. Do I think it's the best written thriller ever? No, it was just okay, but it was enjoyable at the time and it definitely helped me to kind of binge through a book when I kind of was in the mood for that. Finally, I read a nonfiction book, but it was sort of creepy and about death, so I figure I can include it in this video. And that is From Here to Eternity by Katherine Doughty. This is the same author as the person who wrote Smoke Gets in Her Eyes, which I have not read, but that one is all about being a mortician. And this book is also focused on death, but specifically the author goes about and visits different parts of the world in order to experience different death rituals. Because you find out at the beginning of the book that our North American understanding of death and funerals is not a universal thing. And there are other parts of the world that treat their dead very differently, have very different rituals and beliefs around how to take care of those corpses. And it was a pretty interesting book. I'll say it's quite short, which was nice. I don't feel like I could have read this book if it had been a ton longer, because for me, the subject was interesting, but it wasn't something that you just wanna read hours and hours of. And I definitely thought some of the practices were really fascinating. There was a group out in Colorado that do open pyre fires and just burn people's bodies. And I actually thought that was really beautiful the way it was described. And because I have such a fascination with Japanese culture, I really enjoyed hearing about their death rituals and practices. So that was interesting. Now, even though I am including this with my horror and thriller reads, I do have to say that this book is really not creepy. Instead, the author is actually intending the opposite effect. She wanted to normalize 
different death practices and really point out the fact that death is normal and our understanding of it in North America isn't the only way to look at it. And if anything, North American culture, we're very much afraid of our dead and have a lot of biases that aren't actually true. So if you're looking to be creeped out by dead bodies, this really isn't gonna give you that. But if you're just kind of fascinated by how we treat our dead, then this one is an interesting one to explore. And again, it's not that long, so you can kind of fly through it and just get some really interesting tidbits to maybe talk about at a dinner party if you go to dinner parties like I do where you talk about dead people. So that is it for this video. I would love to hear your comments down below on any of the books I mentioned and if you're interested in picking them up. I would also love to get your recommendations for other death or creepy nonfiction books, something besides true crime but kind of fits into the nonfiction shelves that you think I might enjoy based off of my taste in fiction. I would definitely be open to reading more of it. I don't read enough and I probably should change that. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.